Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on online as Pearl of the Pacific. You can find this podcast on my website, which is pearlofthepacific.com, dot info, sorry, pearlofthepacific.info, and YouTube, and I also post it in the Ravelry thread. And you can find the group on Ravelry under Knitted Paradise Podcast. I've also added a button on the podcast page of my website that will take you directly to the, the Ravelry group. So hopefully that makes it a little easier to find. And yes, good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, uh, February 2nd, and I have a snow day. Ta-da! Um, I already recorded this earlier this morning because um, originally we, the our office was just going to open late, and so I thought, oh, I'll just wake up at my regular time and uh, record a podcast because yesterday I spent most of the day in my pajamas, and whenever I was not in my pajamas, I was in my snowsuit uh, digging out the car. So needless to say, I didn't feel like looking halfway decent. I was like, you know what? I'll just wait. And um, while I was recording this morning, I got a text from my boss saying that uh, work is closed. So, yay! I'll put that footage. It was really funny footage, so I'll put that at the very end. Um, But I decided to re-record because that one, there was a lot of distractions between the cat playing and snowblowers and plows going. It was a little crazy. So... Now I'm re-recording. Hopefully a little calmer atmosphere now. And we had a blizzard yesterday, which was kind of fun. I mean, it was fun because we didn't have to go outside. Uh, choir got canceled, so yay for snow days. And uh, the only time I did go outside was to dig the car out. And <laughs> it was funny. There We got over a foot of snow. Maybe a foot and a half. It was a lot of snow. That's the most snow, I think, except for the huge storm that came the year I moved here. This is the most snow I've seen, so that was kind of fun. But yeah, I dug out all the snow around the car, and then I cleaned off the car, and then I had to dig out the car again, which was a little crazy. But it made um, digging out this morning for my husband to go to work a lot easier. It took us about, you know, four minutes instead of half an hour, which is what it probably would have taken if I hadn't dug it out yesterday. So that was nice. And uh, now I'm just enjoying the beautiful white snow. It's really pretty. It's really annoying when you have to drive in it, but it's really pretty. It's light and fluffy and gorgeous. And, uh, but there's a lot of it. I posted one picture on Instagram. I'll post some more later. Our back gate is just like mounds of snow because there's a there's an alleyway and then there's parking and some someone wh- whoever plows the alleyway plowed this plows the parking and plows it like into the building so there's this mound of snow that's probably maybe here on me so it's four four and a half feet tall because I'm a little over five feet and it's a good pile of snow Luckily, someone made a little walkway, so you can't get out, but you still have to climb over some snow. Luckily, I have good snow boots this year. I finally invested in some decent snow boots, which has been a wise, wise investment. All right, well, that being said, let's get into the good stuff, shall we? We had a knit-along that uh, happened in January, and I drew for some prizes, so let's get going. Prize number one is a, or yeah, is a pattern from Emily of Fibertown, and for you and a friend. And the winner of that was number sixty-five, who is Joyce. So HD Joyce. So please get in touch with Emily, who is Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and let her know what pattern you would like, and what pattern your friend would like, and what who your friend is. So that's really exciting. I'll, I'll let her know that you will be contacting her. So, ta-da! 
And the second prize is a pattern, the Static Zing pattern from Megan Williams and a skein of self-striping yarn for knitting that pattern. <laughs> uh, and the winner for that was Saratoga Knitting. I think it was number 53. So Saratoga Knitting, get in touch with me and uh, let me know your address. Actually, I may already have it. Uh, but get in touch with me and let me know that you won and I will pass that along to Megan and she will ship you the yarn and gift you the pattern. And yay! So that was exciting. Thank you all for knit, uh, joining or knitting and casting on a lot of things. There was a lot of things that people cast on so that was really exciting. So the theme for February now that we're into February is fixing things. Fix it February. And... Yeah, <laughs> my thoughts are a little crazy right now. Anyway, so things that might be included in that knit along are, you know, darning a pair of socks. Actually, here, let me show you. I've put a bunch of things in this gigantic bag here that need to be fixed. So one example would be knitting or darning a pair of socks. See this gigantic hole? This is not my socks. I did not knit these. Someone else knit these. And, uh, but they belong to a friend of mine and he said, could you fix this hole? Well, we'll see. <laughs> this is a very big hole. So we'll see about fixing that. And another thing that I need to fix that I've talked about before, where did it go? So many things in this bag is this hat. This is the lined being by, um, Heather of Highland Handmaids. And I knit it. The green is an alpaca. And the white is a Malabrigo Rios, I think. And it's just too short. It doesn't cover my ears. Like if I put it on, it just doesn't come down as long as I want. Actually, now it is, but it, it creeps up sometimes. And I want it just a little bit longer. So I'm going to rip out the decreases, knit just like probably one more stripe repeat, and then do the decreases. So... That's in the bag to fix. And, oh, hair crazies. And, yeah, some other things are like fixing the top of these socks. This cable part, as beautiful as it is, is really tight. So I'm going to rip it out and knit it on a larger needle in hopes that um, it won't dig into my leg when I wear them. It doesn't really dig into my leg. They're just, they're hard to get on because it's so tight. So those are examples. Other examples may include, you know, using yarn to fix a hole on your jeans or jacket or something. So just keep it fiber related and get creative. It'll be fun. So hey, for fixing things in February. All right, where did my show notes go? There they are. All right. Um, on the island, I have just a few things. I have my, what are these, Business Casual Socks by Tannis Lavali out of Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sock in Sheridan. And they are turning out quite well. And I haven't gotten a whole lot of progress, but I did finish the heel on that one. And I've done a few more rows, so... Apparently I have yarn everywhere. So those hopefully will get done sooner rather than later. And those are living in my owl pop bag. Not my owl pop, my yarn pop bag. My other yarn pop bag has owls on it. So yarn pop. And it's got this fabulous gusset. And I think I've talked about this before. When you zip it up, there's this little hole right there where you can put your yarn so your project can live in there but still you've got the gusset which is perfect the other thing that I have on the needles I can't show you because it's my cowl design and I've been working diligently on that and I sent it out to test knitters uh, I think a little prematurely I was really excited to get it out and so I sent it and then I realized that there were a few things that were missing so I'm sorry testers for that but I've been keeping them updated as I find things because I'm also knitting along with them. I knit 
the original design out of Leading Men Fiber Arts Dramaturg, which I love that yarn. Um, but I ran out, so I ordered some more, and it will be coming eventually. And But I'm knitting like a practice. I'm test knitting my own pattern, basically, out of some Malabrigo Rios, which is another one of my favorite yarns. And I'm doing that because a couple of reasons. One, I want to test knit my own pattern. And the other one, I wanted to try it out in a different yarn to see how it reacts and behaves. And Because um, I know not everyone knits patterns out of the yarn that they call for. And I know Malabrigo Rios is a more widely available yarn than Leading Men Fiber Arts, so I wanted to test that out. Although, if you haven't checked out Leading Men Fiber Arts, you really should. They make some amazing things. So, that's the other thing on the needles, which I'm not going to show you yet. Uh, set sale. I have two things. I have the Ease by Alicia Plummer, which I'm wearing. Ta-da! And this is in Madeline Tosh Vintage in the Aora colorway. And I knit it with, I think last time I showed you, I didn't have the, the cowl neck thing. I don't know what this is called. Turtleneck? Cowl neck? Thing? Collar? This thing. Um, I had just had it here. And so I picked up stitches along the, the neckline, and I picked up a few too many, and so I just did some decreases. Here, let me scoot forward so you can kind of see. I did some decreases. Um, they are visible. I just kind of evenly did them around and uh, then just knit straight and did, do this little, like, fold-over thing so that you have a channel thing for these. And I did these in I-cord. It's just a two-stitch I-cord um, rather than the chain, crochet chain that it calls for. But ta-da! If I can kind of stand up, you can see it. And it's got a, a little bit of positive ease, which is what it's supposed to. The sleeves are, they've got a little more positive ease. And uh, they are very long, which I love. So it's, it's kind of like a sweatshirt, which is perfect, and I love it. I've been wearing it a lot, and now that I have a snow day, I can wear it. It's not entirely work appropriate. We, um, we're supposed to wear business attire to work, so I don't really count this as business attire, but no, you cannot eat that. The cat's here. Do you want to come say hi? Come say hi. You want to tell them how we took you outside yesterday in the snow and you howled? Yes. And now you never want to go outside again, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't really like the snow, did you? Okay, you can go now. <laughs> we tried it. He didn't like it. So we took him back inside. It lasted about five seconds. It was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> it probably would be better today. We took him out yesterday when it was, you know, blowing and windy. And today it's just snow. It's pretty. No, you can't eat these things. I know. There's no more hair ties. They're hiding somewhere. Go get one, and then I'll play with you. Yeah, that was part of the distraction <laughs> on the earlier recording, is I had some hair ties sitting right here on the table, and those are one of his favorite toys. And he found them. So, anyway. And now he's looking for them, but there's no more because he took them and put them all over the place. So, who knows where they are now. Anyway, sweater. Sweater is done. I love it. I've washed and blocked it and weaved in all the ends and clipped them. So, it's like done, done. So, I love it. The other thing I finished, which is not done, done with ends woven in and clipped and everything, is the bankhead hat. And it's just out of some blue acrylic that I got. And this is for a charity event that's happening in the end of February that I'll talk more about at another time. But um, I'm trying to knit a bunch of hats that uh, we can give away then. So I've knit two hats and a cowl because I cast on too many stitches for it to be a hat. And uh, so... Hopefully I can get some more done. <laughs> we'll see how that goes.
but that's just out of some acrylic I had that someone gave me when they moved or something like that. I don't remember where it all came from, but I'm happy to use it up. And I know it's easily washable and um, it's warm. So yay for that. All right. What else? Oh, from the mainland. I got some mail this week. I came home one day and there was like a pile of mail on the table. It was fantastic. It was all packages too. There was actually, I don't think there was any junk mail that day. So that was pretty exciting. I got a package from my mom with a beautiful calendar. So thank you, mom. I don't think you watch, but thank you. Um, I'll hang that in my new office when it's finally done. And the other thing I got was some stitch markers from Little Skein in the Big Wool in this cute little tin that I can never open. Let me take them out so you can actually kind of see them. And they're the ring stitch markers. They're blue, they're turquoise blue, and they're very, very pretty. There's a whole set of them in there. And I'm really excited about those. I really like them. So, yay for that. The other, second thing I got, not the other, the second thing I got was uh, my first shipment from the Mad, Mad Geek Fiber, no, Mad Geek Tour, Mad Geek Fiber Tour. I can't remember the exact name. Anyway, it's by Mad Color Fiber Arts and stitched by Jossalu. And they did kind of a combined club. So you get two shipments of yarn. It's a three-month club, so you get two shipments of yarn in one bag. And the theme was Star Trek, and I could not pass that up. So here it is. If you if you're a member or if you're yeah, if you're a member of the club or if you signed up for the club and you don't want to be spoiled and you haven't gotten yours, look away. Ta-da! This is called Doomsday Machine. And it is brilliant. Oh. I love recording during the day because the colors are so nice. So this is from an episode from the original series, which I have not watched a lot of. So I um, I looked it up because I was like, Doomsday Machine, what episode is that? I haven't seen it. Well, yeah, I haven't seen it. So I looked it up and I looked at some pictures and she nailed it. So if you go Google Doomsday Machine and look at pictures, this is it. It's these blues and purples, and on the inside of the machine is like these reds and oranges and beautiful colors. So I'm really excited about this, and I've decided this is going to become my Static Zing Socks, <coughs> excuse me, by Megan Williams. I was looking through my sock yarn stash, and I couldn't really find anything that, oops, sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> I've, I had it on silent. And then I turned it off silent, and then I decided to record again, and now people are texting me. All right, so this is going to become my Static Zing Socks, and I'm going to combine it with this lovely white Cascade Heritage, and this will pop right out. Pop, pop, as Megan likes to say. So that's going to be my Static Zing Socks, which I'm really excited about. Because I couldn't really find anything in my stash that was just right for those that I didn't already have plans for. And uh, I think a plow is going by outside. <laughs> Sorry, there's all sorts of strange noises today that I have no control over. This is better than the first recording, I will say that. And the other thing, the last thing I got was a bag from the Fat Squirrel. She had uh, done an update a while ago of Aaron size sweater bags and those are just really too big for me. I don't really need Aaron weight sweaters because I'm kind of a small person and um, so I mean this this bag is probably the biggest one I have and it's huge and I don't really need another really big one so I was so happy when she had enough left over to do the smaller bags. And so here is mine. Ta -da! If you post it on Instagram, oh sorry, I left some things in there. And uh, she posted on Instagram. She's like, the bags are up. I was like, one is mine. Ha ha. And uh, so yeah, I got the blue one. And inside is just her nice undyed muslin. 
And the outside fabric is really, it's this woven stuff. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's woven and it's really, it seems very durable. So I'm really excited about that because I tend to just kind of like throw my project bags in my other bags or in the pile of, in the basket that I have in our bedroom for project bags. And, uh, you know, I'll have the bags out during lunch and stuff. And so I'm not, I'm, I'm happy that this, I think, will stand up to all of the abuse that I put through my, put my project bags through. I try to take good care of them, but, you know, life happens. So, that was my happy mail day. And uh, most of those things, I think, came on one day, which was kind of crazy. And, uh, let's see, and this it from, from the mainland. Flora and Fauna, I wanted to share a little bit about my design process. I was having lunch with a fellow knitter on Friday, who was a friend of mine who happened to be in town from New York for a meeting, and so I crashed her meeting, and <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really, I didn't crash the meeting, but I showed up for the lunch on Friday, and so we were chatting about knitting and designing, and she had questions about designing because she had just, um, kind of designed a, a mitten pattern and so she was asking questions about you know how did I go through the process of you know you know from you know initial conception of the design to publishing a pattern so I thought I would talk to you about the things that I shared with her uh, the way it worked with the, the hat and mitt pattern, the triple swell hat and the twisted sand mitts that I released in December, and the way it's kind of working with the cowl that eventually will go with that set, and the socks that will go with that set, is I had an idea in my head and I uh, for a stitch pattern, really. And I like the idea of a matching set of like hat and mitt and cowls. Not that are like super matchy matchy but you know the colors go together and the stitch patterns kind of go together or they have the same theme stuff like that so I had an idea of creating a matching set of things and I had come up with these stitch patterns in my head and I had no idea how they were gonna work into the pattern so I did some swatching of the stitch patterns I played around with them a little bit to get them how I wanted them but I didn't quite have the right yarn um, I was testing it in like a sport weight yarn that I had and I realized I really wanted a DK. So I went looking for a DK or a thicker sport, one of the two. And I was at Vogue Knitting Live and I saw the Leading Men Fiber Arts Dramaturg in Poseidon colorway and decided that was it. Like that was the color that I wanted, that was the yarn I wanted, and it was perfect. I'd worked with their Dramaturg before and loved it. So it worked out that way. And um, so then I got home and promptly wound it up and started knitting and the stitch pattern I had already written in my head and I had charted it up because um, that's the easiest way for me to write things is to chart them and um, and then create the written pattern from there and so really knitting it up was more about you know figuring out how many to cast on how far you know how to do the gusset for the thumb on the mittens and um, you know how long to knit it things like that and you know same kind of with the hat how many to cast on how many do I need for the stitch pattern you know with you know calculations with my gauge how to you know fit on a general head so there's a lot of math involved as well and kind of figuring out those numbers and um, with the cowl it's kind of working the same way I had an idea and it's changed about 15 times and <laughs> I finally settled on what I got and um, I may go back to that original thought but it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to be a lot simpler because the hat and the mitts are pretty simple once you get going and I wanted them to be available to all variations of knitters, you know, beginners to advanced and because um, I wanted them to be simple enough for um, beginners but not too boring for, gosh, not, I, I have my work computer open. <laughs> People are sending me all sorts of things. And um, I wanted them not to be too boring for advanced knitters. 
and same with the cowl. So I worked on getting something that was, you know, I've simplified the design a lot and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I wrote up the pattern and then um, kind of as I was knitting it and uh, the stitch patterns I had already figured out and I just hadn't figured out some of the other details. And so as I was knitting it, I figured it, a lot of it out. And the original one that I knit that I ran out of yarn with uh, is not the final design. So I probably will rip it out and re-knit it into the, the final design. But the one I'm test knitting right now is will be the final. And um, there's still some things that I'm working out. And thank you to my test knitters who are putting up with that. <laughs> Um, I probably sent the, them the pattern a little prematurely. There was a few details that were missing that um, either I couldn't have figured out because I didn't actually finish the thing or um, I just forgot. So hopefully I figured all of those out now. And I would like to release the pattern by the end of the month. And so, yeah, it's a pretty simple thing to knit. And once you get going, like I cast on... Saturday and I'm already more than halfway through and I have not been knitting on it a lot so that says something. The hat and the mitts are also pretty quick um, which is nice. I like I like quick knits they you know they're kind of palette cleansers between things so I guess you know in writing continuing with the design process um, you know I write the pattern I send it to the test knitters they give me feedback, mostly by asking questions. I, ha I tell them, you know, don't assume anything. If it's not in the pattern, ask the question. Because, I, you know, I really want this to be available for beginner knitters as well. And if it's not, you know, as an advanced knitter, you kind of assume things. You're like, oh, well, I think they meant to say that. Or, oh, I think they imply that you're supposed to do this here. And, you know, for advanced patterns, that's fine. Um, but I wanted to make mine available for our, all ranges. So, you know, I, I go through a process of them asking a lot of questions, like, did you mean this or did you mean that? And um, my hat and mitt test knitters were really good at that. You know, if they had any questions, they let me know. Or, um, you know, if they something was unclear, they let me know. And that was really helpful. And um, so, you know, I took those into consideration. I made some changes to the pattern. And, uh, and then, and then you, you work on final formatting and, um, that takes a lot of work. You know, the design process, the, uh, the knitting, the test knitting all takes a lot of work, but the formatting of the final pattern also took a lot of work because you want it to be pleasing to the eye. You want it to be, um, easy to read. You want the information to just be right there, easy to find, you know, you're not flipping back and forth a lot. Um, so, you know, on the first page I have big pictures, so you can see what it looks like. Sorry, I'm, I can't knit and talk on the podcast, so I'm playing with my clip instead. I'll put that down. Anyway, so, uh, where was I? Formatting. So on the first page, I have a big picture so you can see what the pattern clearly looks like. And then, you know, on the second page, I have the general information like gauge, needle size, yarn weight, um, you know, needle length, all the abbreviations, what they mean, things like that, um, keys to the chart and uh, stuff like that. And then on the, kind of the third page, I have the pattern. And, uh, you know, if it goes longer, it goes longer. And then at the end, I have, you know, all the obligatory legal information and more pictures and things like that. So that's generally how I laid out my, my patterns. And I, um, I looked a lot at other patterns from successful designers and saw how they laid theirs out. And, you know, things that I liked, things that, you know, I found a little bit confusing. And so I tried to make them better with my pattern. And so that was kind of my process. And, you know, eventually I came up with something I was happy with and, you know, published it and released it out into the world for you all beautiful people to knit. So I hope that answers any questions that anyone had about designing. If you have any more, feel free to ask me. You can either PM me on Ravelry or post in the what do you want to hear about thread 
and I'll be happy to answer those. But I just thought, you know, for anyone who's working on designing something, that might be a helpful process to share about. So with that, I will bid you all adieu. I'm going to do some stuff around the house and then head into work for, um, I know I have a snow day, but we have game night tonight, which is really important. And so <laughs> I text the, um, we, I play D and D with a group after work on Mondays and, um, I texted the, the, the DM, the dungeon master or game master GM. You can call me either one. And I said, are we still having game time? Because I think everyone's going to want it, even though we're not working. I'm like, maybe we can start early. And, uh, cause we were going to work on painting, our, our little figures and uh, I have mine here I'll show you in a second and uh, so I think we're gonna start a little early so I'm gonna do some stuff and then head in for some gaming and some painting so if you follow me on Instagram you've already seen but I did paint my figure um, I have a friend who plays a lot of Warhammer and so he had some paints she's really dark so it's kind of hard to see but um, that's the back. This is my first paint job, so it's not really well done. This is my attempt at painting a little figure. And her name is Sora. She is a half-elf paladin, but she's not heavily armored. So I actually went with, for those of you who play D&D, this will make sense. I went with a rogue figure because um, it fit her character more. But she does have a, a magic sword and a bow and arrow you can find on her back there. So this was the closest figure I could find her. Um, but I'm going to work. So she's mostly done being painted. And because uh, I was over at my friend's house who plays Warhammer and he had some paints. So I was like, oh, can I play around with your paint? So, but I'm going to do some highlighting and hopefully lighten her up a bit so she's not so dark. But there's Sora. Ta-da. And uh, so I'm going to head into work a little later for game time as I drop that <laughs> uh yeah hopefully you guys are enjoying your winter and staying warm and cozy and knitting with your family and enjoying playing in the snow unlike pan who doesn't like the snow although when i was digging out the car yesterday a dog uh, a lady was you know letting her dog out to you know do his business and he was having the best time in the snow and she was trying to get him back inside <laughs> And he's like, but mom, this is so much fun. He was jumping all over the place. It was great. Complete opposite from my cat who had wanted nothing to do with that snow. Nothing. Right, Pan? He's much happier inside. All right. Well, enjoy the snow or the sun. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you're in the middle of summer. So enjoy that while we all complain about snow in winter. <laughs> in, uh few months it'll be you and not us so you know it goes both ways anyway have a great week I will talk to you soon and bye sorry my boss just texted me oh I just found out I don't have work today <laughs> brilliant well that's great now that I'm all dressed well half dressed and wearing my pjs on my bottom so